بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعزائي طالبات وطلاب برنامج الترجمة الفورية أسعد الله صباحكم اليوم الاثنين ثلاثة وعشرين مارس الفين وعشرين ودي محاضرتنا بعنوان <hesitation> The Verb Phrase والمحاضرة ديت طبعا من المقرر بتاعنا اللي هو عنوانه Linguistic Structures When we talk about the verb phrase, the first thing we have to think about it is the verb forms. So the following are the verb forms. How many forms do we have? We have the base form, we have the S form, we have the past form, we have the ING form, we have the passive participle form. So as you see here, these are four forms. The first one is the base form. In the base form, we have the verb without adding anything. Okay, so like play, steal, find, this is the base form. The S form is a form which we use in the present symbol with the third person singular. And as we see here, there is an S at the end of the verb. And we call it the S form, like plays, steals and finds. The past form is the form which we use in the past symbol, okay, like played. And with regular verbs, we have stolen and found. The ing form, it is the form which we use in the continuous or progressive tenses, like playing, stealing, finding, etc. And the, the past or the passive participle, it is the, the, the form which we use in the passive and in the present perfect and the past perfect forms, like played, stolen, and found. We know that there are five forms of the verb. Now, what are the uses of these five forms? Okay, let's talk about these uses. The base form is used in the imperative when we form an imperative sentence. It is used when we form a sentence in the present symbol and it is used in the infinitive. Okay, let's have example. In the imperative, when we say, play tennis with me. And in the present symbol, when we say, you play very well, this is the present symbol. And in the infinitive, when we say, I would like to play. And when we say the infinitive, we mean that there is two before the, the base form. So to play is an infinitive. The use of the S form, it is used only in the present tense with the third person singular or the pronouns he, she and it. Okay, this is the use of the S form, like Simon plays very well, or he plays very well. The past form is used only in the past simple tense, when we say, they played back the film. The I in G form has two uses. It is used as a gerund, and by the gerund here, this form, the I in G form, is used as a noun. Okay, so when we say a gerund, we use it as a noun. When we say playing tennis is fun, shopping is important. Okay, and also it is used in the active participle. By the active participle, we mean we use it in the present continuous and the past continuous tenses. When we say you are playing very well. The past or the passive participle, as you see here, it is used as the past participle when we have the, the, the perfect tenses, whether these tenses is the present perfect or the past perfect, like when we say they have played back the phone, or the passive participle, when we have a sentence in the passive, like the film was played back. When we talk about the verb phrase, we have to differentiate between finite and non-finite verbs. What is a finite verb and what is a non-finite verb, okay? Let's see. A finite verb phrase is one that can be used as the main verb of a sentence. So when we have a verb which is used as the main verb of the sentence, this is a finite verb phrase. What does this mean? A verb which is preceded by the subject and it shows tense. When the verb is preceded by a subject and this verb has tense, this is a finite verb. But a non-finite verb is 
an infinitive or gerund or participle. So we have three forms of a non finite verb. It can be an infinitive, it can be a gerund, or it can be a participle. So look at this. When we say you leave, leave here is a finite verb because it is the, the main verb of the phrase, of the sentence. It is anxious. So is here is a finite verb because it is present and it, is, it has a subject, it. Someone will steal. So steal here is a finite verb because it shows tense, it is in the future and it has a subject. But when we say disappearing, disappearing is a non-finite verb. It is a gerund. To stop is a non-finite verb. Found is a participle. It's a non-finite verb. Number two, a finite verb phrase can come in the main clause and or or the subclause. So it can be the verb of the main clause or the verb of the subordinate clause. The subordinate clause, the, the, it is the clause uh, where we have a conjunction at the beginning of this clause. So here, look at this sentence. When we say, for example, here, we were pleased. We were pleased when the police took action. So here we have two clauses. This is the first clause. We call it the main clause. The main clause is a clause which can stand alone. When we say we were pleased, full stop, it gives a complete meaning. But if we say when the police took action, so what? The meaning is not complete. So we call this clause a subordinate clause. So a main clause is a clause which can stand alone by itself as a sentence. The subordinate clause is a clause which cannot stand alone. It has to be attached to the main clause. So let's go back. We said that the finite verb can be used as the verb of the main clause or the subordinate clause. How? We were pleased. This is the main verb of the main clause. When the police took action, this is the verb of the subordinate clause. But when we talk about a non-finite verb, it comes only in the subordinate clauses or the subclauses. Only. We cannot have a non-finite verb in the main clause. Let's see this in this example. We approved of the police taking action. So this is a non-finite verb and it comes in the subclause because the main clause here comes with approved so approved is the main clause and of course it is finite and the police taking action it is in uh, the, the the subordinate clause and it is non-finite uh, sometimes there are two verbs uh, together or two verb phrases together and these two verb phrases can be in the form like a finite verb and then a non-finite one following each other so in some cases you will have a finite verb following a non-finite verb look at this here when we say the police wanted to take action so wanted here is the main verb and it is finite to take action, it is a non-finite verb. So here we have two verb phrases following each other. The first one is a finite and the second one is non-finite. In order to identify a finite verb phrase, we have to know that the finite verb phrase shows tense, modality, aspect, and voice. Four things. So, a finite verb phrase shows tense whether it is past or present modality whether there is a modal verb or not aspect aspect whether it is in the perfect or progressive tenses and voice whether it is active or passive again tense present or past modality a modal verb or not a modal verb aspect perfect tenses or continuous tenses voice we mean whether it is active or passive let's see this table the tense here, okay, we have past or present. Let's see this example. It showed or it shows. So it showed here it is past and shows here it is present. 
modal verb okay to decide whether there is a model or not they could find so could here is a model verb if we have a model verb it means that this is finite or they found there is no model verb so we can have a model verb or not a model verb the aspect perfect or not continuous or not so look at this it has gone this is what this is perfect and it may not it may be not perfect like it goes continuous it was happening so this is a continuous or it happened the voice whether it is passive or active they were informed or he informed them so these are the four factors okay which show us this verb is finite if we find any of these or some of these or all of them we decide that this verb is 